A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Duck Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Budic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Story number one. We tried to stop the humans. Written by Original Rich Game. Last visual recording of First Admiral Afferntal. The footage kicked in and a dark room was lit up by flickering artificial light. On the screen was Lars, a red-faced creature that had similarly red protrusions coming out from the edges of her head like spines. Her eyes were completely red, but in a lighter shade, and she looked terrified by the way her spine-like protrusions wobbled and in the way her hairless brow was raised. Her voice was shaken when she spoke. <laughs> We were once a happy galaxy. We had shared our warlike tendencies in favor of peace and prosperity. Indeed, the Total Disarmament Act had outlawed anything that sole purpose was to damage or kill. We explored the far, far reaches of the galaxy, found other interplanetary communities, and some still venture towards the stars and taught them our pacifist ways. That is why, when we reached System 26-8B, now remanded as Sol System, we were appalled at what we had discovered. Humans, the most self-destructive creatures of all time. We knew that they would be a hard species to convert to pacifism before we even saw them, as we noticed that planet was a death world. We had just... Just converted a death world to a passable place, and we thought that we could do the same here. But then, uh, the war broke out. The humans called it the Second World War. We call it the Abomination. We immediately broke off all attempts to contact them. They were far beyond our help, far too suspicious and paranoid. A few decades later, after the war, we ventured back to Earth even whilst the rest of the galaxy pleaded with us to not let the monsters out. But then we saw that they had evolved into a new barbarism. A proxy war had broken. They spied on each other, friend and foe for intelligence, betrayed and backstabbed each other as they threatened nuclear annihilation. We decided to leave them after we sampled their culture, if you could call it that and saw their reaction to aliens, and saw the reaction was shoot to kill. There were many reactions to this. Even though we had created a paradise of pacifism, some of us were keener to blow them up, destroy them in the exact way their moving pictures depicted. We rejected this. In our outermost asteroid fields, we set up impenetrable force fields. They couldn't leave. No one could get in. We let asteroids leave, and their probes too, so that they didn't suspect anything. Our hope was that they would kill themselves, and that we wouldn't have to worry. Actually, using the force field was the worst case scenario. But then, they didn't die. About 95 years of the abomination that started to set up a permanent colonies on the fourth planet and within a century, they were on the moons, the fifth and six planets. The first admiral coughed up a bit of orange blood, which trickled out of front. She wiped it off her chin and began talking again. We uh, realized that they had nearly discovered FTL. They had advanced at unbelievable rates, far faster than any others before them. Their brains, it seemed, worked faster than the average sentient. This in turn lowered their life expectancy, and their sleep times were amazingly long as the planet went for an intelligence of a strength evolution. Their first working FTL ship hit our force field and exploded. We all shrank back at this. They had launched a ship to the stars, asking what was out there. And the ah, uh, stars yelled back, No! The humans didn't do much else. They just stopped. Or so it seemed. For the first time in a thousand years, we began military preparation. The entire galaxy. 
I was amongst those who joined. We hoped to talk them down with overwhelming sighs. But that wasn't how it happened. We were sat outside the force wheel, waiting, when more probes, more than ever before, were sent out. We let them out. We had no reason to not, and waited even longer. Psychological warfare, they called it. They had a name for war to make your opponent mentally exhausted. Then their fleet came. Impossible numbers at impossible sizes. They had expanded so fast. It was impossible to see how back then. Later, we found out they always knew that we were there. Their probes scanned us. The tank was so backwards that we didn't even see it coming. And they built their ships from what they saw of us. They shot the force field with a body, unlike anything we'd seen before. Then the force field broke, overloaded by firepower. I'm ashamed of what we did next. We started to shoot at them. But we frightened? Definitely. But the humans didn't fire at us when the force field dropped. She coughed up the orange blood again, and the video started to fail. The seeding spat sparks at the floor and over her body. The war, the horrible war, began afterwards. The humans won the battle we begun, and the pushed. We tried to communicate our surrender. They spoke differently than we did. We could understand their writing, but they couldn't comprehend ours as we talked through releasing gases. They made the air dance for them. So the war went on. Battle after battle they won, we lost. We had 1,000 years of peace, and they had 2,000 years of war. They could fight. We could not. My ship was destroyed after the battle for the whole world. They glassed our planet. All the people there are dead, like so many other worlds. A silent tear streamed down her eye. She was choking now, gasping for air. The spark remorselessly spat down on her as if disgusted had she died. Not long after, the recording itself failed. It was sent out alongside an emergency transmission. On the other side of the galaxy, they watched, horrified. Already, they were removing logos and flags of association, so when the humans came, they would stop and see that they had met the border. But now they knew. The humans wouldn't stop. They couldn't stop them. End of story. Story number two. Humans have trunks, written by Wendy Toast. Humans don't have trunks, but if them don their trunk and masks, one should turn and flee, for they use these to breathe their toxic breath, and what follows them is only death. A poem was written by an unnamed elven soldier. The elven fortress stood resolute before the human attackers. Within it stood the last bastion of hope for a dying elven empire. The natural fortress was made of thick woven trees and vines, absorbing or repelling any artillery the humans could throw at it. The casters within were privy to firing bolts of lightning and fire, at any planes that attempted to fly overhead, making it an even tougher nut to crack. Running out of options, the humans called upon the 15th Chemical Corps to finally break the siege. Days after the telegram had been sent, the elves watched as trucks full of different humans arrived, wearing different garb than usual. They also were unloading strange cylinders with great care. They simply assumed the humans would try yet another bombardment, followed by a mad dash for any possible breach. The archers manned the walls, ready to rain hail of arrows upon any fool who dared to get within range. On a misty morning, the smell of hay filled the air of the fort. The ships changed with ease, the humans having left the fort be in peace for a surprising amount of time. A man on the wall looked to see what the Mayflyers were up to, seeing the oddly dressed men rolling the canisters around, a strange vapor coming from them. He turned to the warrior next to them. 
Do you wish to dislodge us with pleasant smells? The birds were the first to go. By the end of the day, many of the caster's familiars had perished for unknown reasons, the smell still lingering in the air. By morning, the warriors were coughing up pink phlegm, some collapsing to never stand again. The humans began another bombardment, only this one was different. The shells did not explode against the walls like the last had. Instead, they leaked white smoke that made most who inhaled it writhe in pain. The casters used gusts of wind to try and wood it away. Yet, it lingered. The oddly dressed men advanced in a commotion, some of them wearing odd things on their backs and holding torches. The warriors upon the walls tried to fend them off through burning eyes, but could not. Before the remaining troops could be rallied to the walls, great spouts of fire penetrated them. The attackers burned holes through them and scorched anyone unlucky enough to be nearby. The fort fell that day, elves falling to flames, bullets, and burning lungs, many more having been scarred for life due to the exposure to the gas. End of story. And that